What's up guys? My name is Andre. I want to welcome you to Auto Logic. Today we at McKinney Volkswagen. We're going to be checking out the all new Arteon, which is the replacement for the Volkswagen CC. One of my favorite Volkswagens that they ever had. So um, since we're here, you know, while I'm waiting on to, uh, to get the key for the um, online Arteon SEL, I just want to explain to you a few differences between the SE and the SEL and the R-Line. All right, so we're gonna swing it around here. What we have right here is the Arteon R-Line. Right, so we got an R-Line here. One of the main things you can tell between the R-Line and the regular um, SEL, well, I think this is the SE and SE, uh, is the mirrors don't fold on the SEs on the SELs all the mirrors fold um, this, that's what I was told on all the SEL the mirrors fold but this, this being an R line uh, what you get is a little bit of body kit right here some blackout a little bit of sportier look on this particular model we have the blackout wheels the 20s I think these are 245 uh, 35 40s, I mean 225, 35 20s, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you got your R line badge right here on the side. This particular model has the panoramic sunroof. As you can see over here, this is an SEL, but it's not the R line. So you still get the 40 mirrors, you still get the panoramic sunroof. Right, but you don't get the 20 inch wheels, you get 18s instead. You don't get the kit on it, um, so you don't get the aggressive look. The front bumper is completely different between the SE, uh, between the R line and the non R line models. But what you do get, but what you can see really on all of them is that what I've noticed is the huge, huge Audi influence right so you can see the lines right here have it you know like somebody took a ruler or an edger or even a piece of paper and they just kind of folded it in and said oh that'll make some good lines let's let's let's, let's work that into the clay model you know and they did and it looks good the uh rti has a more aggressive look either in the r line or non r line than the uh, CC that it replaced. Now you can see on the online model what I thought wasn't fake ducts, but actually it is, but it's not cooling. It just adds to the aerodynamic to help scuff the air down the side of the car to make it a little bit more fuel efficient. And as you can see right here, this is a, a gloss vent that's in the front. And on this gloss vent right here, it's where you will hide your parking sensors as well as your uh, most likely your uh, smart cruise control with the radar cruise control and things of that nature um, but man this is a, a very very beautiful car and check this out ladies and gentlemen look what I got so what I want to do for you is a cold start I mean, it's an RTI, it's a red line. So we wanna hear what this exhaust sound like when it starts up first thing, all right? And as you can hear, it is fairly quiet. Nice, quiet. Even though it has an aggressive look to it, it's a fairly quiet car. The interior is beautiful. So I'm gonna show you uh, show you that in a minute. Uh, right now, I'm just gonna uh, 
move the car to a little better location. All right, new location here. I'm still on the lot, but one of the things I wanted to show you, you know, that this car has, see the aggressiveness of the headlights, how the design element they brought down from the hood to give it um, almost like an eyelid look right here. How it's very, very Audi like. You know, here you got your daytime running lights right there. And then daytime running lights right here. Like I showed you before, your air scoop right there that goes around the side to help the car uh, escape through the air a little better, give you a little bit better fuel economy. Then, you know, look, you got your halos, what it looks like right here. Man, this is just very, very, a lot of beautiful cars, just a lot of detail. A lot of detail. Just let you check it. Look at this. And as you can see, how I was, you know, joking earlier about the paper folding, but look. How the lines the hood just kind of bulges up a little bit kind of steps down steps down here and it steps down a little bit and then steps down here and then this particular line like the audi a5 this is where your hood opens up at and then they took that line that style that line and took it all the way down the side of the vehicle to bring it around the tail light you see that Look at that detail that this just and then here you know they pick it up a little bit add a little small spoiler right there a little small lip spoiler you got your blacked out tail lights that's most likely a turn signal reverse light probably some super bright led look at these 20s Tell you man, it's crazy. Manufacturers are putting 20s on rides now. They've been doing it for a while. But you know us car guys. These are nice wheels, but uh change. That's what we would do. Change over. But this does have your um helium wheel. You'll know it's helium by the green on the valve stem. But just look at look at the detail. See how it it fans and flips. How it folds over like that. That's that's crazy. The detail on this car is, is it's amazing, man. German engineering at its finest. Like I showed you earlier, your behind it, this is like a gloss black panel. And I'm assuming it's see-through. So behind that would be your front parking sensors, because I don't see any of them. Usually they're on most cars, you'll see them here. But my assumption would be that they put it behind here, as well as the smart radar sensor for uh, smart cruise control. So you can keep your distance so it does it automatically. So it may either be there or here because this is kind of a gloss, gloss over too. So I'm assuming it's one of those. But it's just a beautiful, beautiful car. I'm just going to step back and just let you look at it. Me personally, I could go without the chrome accents in the front, but you know, some people like that. But I'm glad that that Volkswagen chose to upgrade the CC. I mean, even though it's called the Arteon now, and it's a little bit bigger than the CC, but this is their flagship model. But man, it's it's not all SUVs and crossovers. You know, there's a whole lot of us that still love cars still love cars i mean crossovers and suvs they have their place don't get me wrong i understand that they have their place but man we still love cars and american car companies are forgetting that besides dodge so what that's going to make us americans and patriots like me you know i like to represent my american counterpart in the tuner scene.
But what that's going to force us to do is to go overseas. We're going to go to Japan. We're going to go to Germany. We're going to go to Europe, to England and Korea and every place else that makes beautiful cars because America chasing the almighty, almighty profit margin, which I understand. Don't get me wrong. But they're forgetting about us. You know, they're forgetting about us. But look at this right here. As I was just sitting here looking and ranting. See how this line goes down, breaks down. And they got this little hook that dives in a little bit and steps back out to break up the door panel so it's just not a boring flat side. Like I said, I could go without the chrome strip there, but that's just me. I'm not a chrome particular person. But again, I'm going to show you these tail lights. The 3D accents on these tail lights. It's not as extreme as some, but you can see the 3D element here. You know, it bulges out a little bit, a little step there. You know, the whole, it's not just flat how a lot of cars are doing it. It's a nice element to it. Some nice detail. Even the trunk isn't just flat. You know, you see the detail in that. And then your Volkswagen sign pops up for you open the trunk up. And then your backup camera will be hidden underneath that right there, most likely. But let's, while we're back here, let's check out this trunk. Or should I say, hatchback? Utility, baby. Off the A5 or A7. I think this is off the A7. So, look at that. Who needs a crossover? You got utility right there. You got your hatchback. Look at that. Seats fold down to give you more room. Not sure about the numbers, but it's a lot, a lot of room. I mean, fold down the seats, you can probably get some utilitarian, get some two by fours in there, by eight feet, two by four by eights in there. That looks about four feet wide, so maybe four by uh some plywood i don't know just talking utilitarian there for uh, people who think that cars are not utilitarian but man look at this this is the space back here you know this is it's crazy the amount of the amount of space that's back here i mean this is it's like wow really really Look at that. I mean, I'm a big guy. I ain't gonna lie. You see, look. I could fit in here. So, it's like, wow. I love that. I really, really like that. Like a hatchback. And from the side with the hatch down, going to look like a hatchback. So now we got the A5 Sport back. We got the Audi A7. We had the Buick Regal. I can't remember the name, but that's going away because Buick is going to stop making cars. We got the Kia. Um, uh, the Kia. Uh, shoot, forgetting brain fart. Um, but the Kia sedan. Um, the Kia Stinger. There we go. The Kia Stinger does a hatch. All of these are in competition. Well, the Audi A5 and A7 are really not in competition with the Kia Stinger. But it's definitely Kia Stinger's in competition with this. And the utility of the hatchback. Ford, GM, Chrysler. Look, take notes. This is what you need to be doing. Cars are still, we, we still love it. This is what you need to be doing. Man. So, what I want to show you right now is the interior. So, we're going to close this trunk. Enough all. It's not automatic, so you got to pull it. But, 
doesn't take much effort. Not much effort at all. So I'm going to show you this interior. So first, you know, the door has been locked. Well, it's not locked. Door is being locked. Let's see if you can just walk up to the door with the door being locked, with the key in your pocket, reach for the door, it unlocks, and open it. Look at that. Now we want to talk about the detail on the inside. Here on the door, you got three speakers for our sound guys too. You know, a lot of car guys are sound guys, but we got one, two, three speakers. Soft touch, hard where it needs to be. Soft touch up here where it needs to be. Got your trunk opener. Here you got your mirror controls, window control. Just look at that. I like this, that it's not, um, looks like a silver carbon fiber but it's really not it's some sort of aluminum or well of course it's plastic but the way that it looks is it's, it's beautiful like the silver touches here the door handle it's, it's beautiful look at that look at your seats but it's been the r-line this is the all black interior got your bolstering not too much bolstering but just enough just enough got your memory seats got your motor controls right there for your seats all right so what I did while off camera was I adjusted the front seat to where I would be sitting at and I want to sit in the back because with this particular camera so I can get you a better view of the front so have to unlock the door Look at that amount of space. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Alright, I want to sit back here. Man, look at this, this leg room. Look at that. And this is adjusted to where I would be sitting at. I'm 5'10". So, look at all of that space. I'm telling you guys, you don't need SUVs and crossovers nowadays. But what I do want to show you is this interior. Look how beautiful this is. Again, you got that silver. I want to say carbon fiber, but it's not. I don't know what you, what design element. I have to find out what they call it. But that's beautiful. It's only a single screen, not double screen, which is cool. You know, we don't need all of that. Volkswagen should be Android and Apple compatible. Got your clock with the luxury look. It just looks beautiful. Like I said, these are all soft touches where it needs to be. Hard where it needs to be. Electronic e-brake. Got your transmission shifter. On the steering wheel, you got your... Um, sport mode so you got your shift pedals on your steering wheel I do like the aluminum element they added around the brake and footrest and gas pedal then up top here you have your sunroof which this part is manual so I could deal with that that's, that's not too big of an issue Anybody, that's the selling point. You wasn't looking to do nothing anyway. And then, speaker, two speakers here. And if I'm not mistaken, there's probably two behind me. So you're looking at two, four, what's that? Ten speaker system. Nope. Eleven, twelve speaker system. Because you got your speaker in the front up there in the dash. Man, this is just, it's beautiful, man. So why can't why can't American car companies do this kind of stuff? Man? I mean Volkswagen's glad you're not doing it. Volkswagen's glad you out the game. But man, look at this. This is this is gorgeous. In the back seat, there is no USB, but you do have the vent 
and the 12 volt right there but there is no no other controls back here but man this is this is beautiful 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 right. now what I'm gonna do is show you the jewel of the car the brains the 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 I know this this isn't leaning straight but what I'm gonna do now what I want to do now is show you the the brains of the vehicle the heart of the girl alright so in just a moment alright it's real easy to do so what we're gonna do is grab this handle here you hear the hood pop up walk around to the front reach underneath here somewhere uh somewhere hold on gotta find it is it there you go i'm doing it with one hand so it's a little difficult but once you unlock it look at that she's gorgeous man nice clean neat battery in the front a lot of cars are putting the battery in the back for weight distribution, but we got the battery in the front. Got your air intake. I think this is a V6. V6. Nope. Four cylinder turbo. Even better. So look at that turbo. Turbo! That's what we do, baby. I don't know if you guys remember that old cartoon car turbo team when the guy would get hot he would turn into a car Man, just look it's just beautiful beautiful layout airbox easy to get to Mass airflow sensors back there easy to get to You know sometimes engineers automotive engineers they don't think about the uh, Guys that got to perform maintenance on the vehicle Sometimes they do and they make things easy to get to. And as you can see, there's a lot of space in here. So, this particular car, everything will be fairly easy to get to. Fairly easy to do maintenance on as she ages. But man, beautiful layout, beautiful layout. As you can see, like I told you, see how that line went around? To run the wheel well. Told you that was part of the, the hood. And she closed. Yeah, she closed. Alright, so what I want to do now, I'll just show you the startup sequence. Um, so you can see some of the things that are that happens uh, when you start it up in just a moment. One of the features that the Arteon has is if you got all the windows down, sunroof open, all you need to do with the key in your pocket is order the tap it once, on it again. All the windows will roll up, sunroof closed. That keeps you from getting in the vehicle, hopping to start it up, and do everything. Also, one of the features that this car has, like the many other cars today, is remote start. So we just lock the vehicle, tap twice, start right up. And most vehicles today, they usually stay running for about 10, 15 minutes. Or if you need to stop it sooner, just tap it, tap it twice, you cut off, go about your business. Okay. All right, guys. This is my test drive impression on the Arteon Online SEL. Um, from what I've written so far, it's pretty good. Has different driving modes from uh, sport to comfort. Um, in sport mode, you can really see, you can really feel um, the suspension stiffen up. You can feel the uh, when you hit the gas pedal, you can see how the uh, it's a more instantaneous response. Um, 
so so far I like it um, this is the four cylinder turbo um, so you should get pretty good gas mileage um, but let's get it out on the road road and uh, mess with it a little bit um, I think this car does have smart cruise control So we may see how that works. Those are always scary for me. Because um, you're putting trust in the car and not yourself. So those are always really, really scary. Um, but that's where technology is headed, you know. Everything is headed. Um, to detach the driver more and more from the car. Um, in America, the worse we get as far as driving and distracted we get, we're assigning more um, responsibility to the car itself, which is kind of scary. That's where we're headed. But this is this feels this feels good. This feels really good. I have it in sport mode right now. So excuse the camera if it's a little bumpy or bouncing around. It's just I'll let you know that sport mode is working. High stiffness of the suspension. Volkswagen, like I said earlier, I like how Volkswagen is continuing to make vehicles. They're not following the trend um, of cutting out cars and just going with a complete SUV line. This is the evolution of the Volkswagen CC. Um, it's bigger. Um, it has a hatch now, so it's more utilitarian. Uh, it's it's just it's better than what it than the CC. Um, and it looks better, it drives better, uh, at least so far. Uh, but um, <coughs> but this is this is this is really nice so far. The interior, um, like I so showed you earlier, the screen is all digital. Um, I'll show you later how it's the. Um, it's all digital you still get your um, you get your map your navigation in the middle of the screen similar to the Audi TT um, that's where it started at with the Audi TT you know they took away the screen on the, the screen on the center of the vehicle and gave everything in the driver infotainment so the driver everything was there so I like how they kind of sort of implemented that with the Volkswagen slight turbo lag but other than that she downshift she goes for the average person they won't notice the turbo lag um, you'll feel the downshift and she goes and I like that there's no almost zero hesitation there's almost zero hesitation in the car and what I want to try now is the scary part. Let's uh, turn it on. Cruise control is activated. I'm going to set it at 60. Button here where 
car can maintain the distance of the car in front of me. There's really not, it sees it, but right now it doesn't see it because it's so far ahead. Um, but I want to, you know, this is. Smart cruise control. There's something that you know. Got to get used to it um, because it's as cars get smarter uh, and us as drivers become less involved. Uh, that's one of the things that they're implementing, and eventually, you know, cars are going to be fully automated. But right now, um, we have smart cruise control. And some vehicles and in the high-end vehicles um, they have almost complete automation which is very scary I don't know if I can put that much trust into a machine um, but the car drives it drives nice we'll put it back in comfort Suspension lightens up, and less bouncy. It's just, it's, it's nice. So if you're in the market for a new vehicle, and you are um, looking into say a uh, small to mid crossover and if your um, budget is around 50 around 50,000 um, or 40 to 50,000 um, I would definitely say look at Volkswagen look at the RT on um, that hatchback it totally changes the dynamics of this car and what you can use it for definitely say this should be on your um, schedule to test drive if that's what you're looking for go look at one go pop the hatch drop the seats and you will see what this vehicle is capable of um, it is very utilitarian and it's a car that's what I love about it it pulls down everything that made the a7 and A5 Sportback good and brought it down a notch for the average consumer. So that's what I really, really like about this car. It's amazing. Drives great. Suspension is beautiful. But this sport or um, comfort. Of course, if it was mine. And it definitely have to get some stage two upgrades and exhaust and maybe a tune for the turbo and it's a little too quiet for my taste but uh, most people don't care about that anyway it's just us car guys um, but again I want to thank uh, McKinney Volkswagen for making this happen and I want to thank um, Will I want to thank Will. I don't know if Will want to be on camera. You want to be on camera, Will? No worries. They say what's up. This is Will. Hey, guys. How are you doing? So if you're in the market for a Volkswagen, whether it's SUV, hatchback, crossover, or car, and you in North Dallas, North Dallas, Texas, come here to McKinney Volkswagen. Look up my man, Will. He's going to hook it up. And make it happen, all right? Yes. So and until uh, next, uh, just to look forward, there's Atlas Crossport that will be here in about February. Uh, it's a little, it's a smaller SUV from uh, from the Atlas, but it's a five seater. You gotta look at that one too. It's really amazing. Uh, there you go. We'll be here for that one too. So until next time, remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell for my next video, and like I always say, be safe, be quick, burn rubber, baby. We out of here.